Each week, we welcome to our NFG stage one of our highly talented members or special guests with something designed to help you and your business. Our next speaker knows just what it takes to develop successful marketing strategies and how to get best performance out of their teams. She spent 25 years in the marketing profession, building her career from startups to some of the world's largest brands. She's an award-winning chartered marketeer who has been globally ranked within the top 100 chief marketing officers. Alongside client work, she speaks at events and is often featured in marketing and business publications, sharing her expertise and encouraging entrepreneurs and business leaders to leverage the power of excellent marketing, starting, of course, with strategy. Using her talents as a registered mentor, coaching marketeer and entrepreneur talent, in 2016, she set up her own consultancy, making it her mission to provide the CMO advantage to SMEs to enable them to drive economic growth. Today, she'll share some of her insights with us and get us to think about the eighth P of marketing. Yes, I know many of us think that there's only four or perhaps seven, but now there's eight, so pay attention. With her talk titled, Adding Value to Your Bottom Line, Your Customers and the Planet, we welcome Yadmila Yu. Good morning, Yadmila. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Richard. Um, no slides today. I'm going to uh, to save uh, the, the planet uh, digitally today. So no, uh, <laughs> no excess slide where it's going to be a, uh, a sort of fireside chat. Um, so today I'm going to share some CMO insights and talk to you about peas. Yes, your mum will have told you when you were little about the importance of eating your green vegetables. Well, I'm here to talk to you about a new pea, a pea that's different from the garden variety. Those of you who've undertaken the marketing function in your own business, or those of you in sales and marketing roles, will probably have heard about the four P's of marketing. Product, price, place, promotion. You're probably expecting me to quiz you there, but no, I'll, I'll spare you that. Um, some of you may have even heard about the seven P's, and the extra ones are people, process and physical evidence. Here's a question for you. In the chat, give me a yes or no answer for this question. As part of your business planning, have you considered these four or seven Ps? I'll give you a moment to, uh, to answer that. Let's see if we see any yeses or noes. Have you considered the Ps when you're doing your planning? Mixed. Mixed thinking there, okay. Now, in the chat, give me another yes or a no for the answer to this question. Did you create a marketing plan? And as part of that, did you consider the, the four or seven Ps? So first question was about your business planning, but then did you go beyond that and create an actual marketing plan and think about the no, wow, oh goodness. Right, stay behind after class, everyone. Um, okay, so there are various models and concepts that get used for business and marketing planning. I like going back to the basics and the seven Ps is a great tool to use in your planning. So for all of you that have said no to the first question or the second question, um, I want you to, but your homework for today uh, is to explore the seven Ps and think about them in your business planning. Now, for a while now, I've added in an eighth P, but in fact, numbering it eighth is wrong because it really should come first. Now, can you guess what the eighth P is? You've probably guessed it. Clue was in my talk title. It's purpose. So let's just have a quick definition because there's no marketing talk that doesn't include a definition. So the Chartered Institute of Marketing states that marketing is the management process responsible for identifying Anticip anticipating and satisfying customer requirements profitably. Now from this, you might take away that marketing's here to support business and deliver a return on investment. Quite right too, it should. In business terms, after all, if we're not making a profit, we're likely to go out of business. Profit is important. But for some time now, we've been shifting our thinking, quite rightly in line with the shifting buyer behavior, that all important customer that we're serving. Buyers and customers want and expect more from business. 
There was a recent um, report, uh, it's an annual report, the Edelman Trust Barometer Report, and it talks about uh, what people trust. And what it pointed out this year is that trust has been declining for many years in, the, in uh, certain areas. And now it's at its all time low and there's a void because we don't trust big business, the media, the government. We're now looking to everyday business leaders to lead the way. We're looking to them for the truth. That's you and me, folks. Wow, the responsibility on our shoulders. Now, if you've ever attended my Attraction Factor Strategy Boardroom events, you'll have heard me define customer as different audiences. Prospect, customers, employees, partners, investors, shareholders, buyers. This means we in business need to consider all of these audiences. Think of all of those customers. They all have to buy you in a different way, to want to work with you, to buy, from, buy your product from you, or to invest in you. So how we market to them, how we show up as leaders to them is really, really important. Now we're in an era far removed from the early days of factories, the early days of industrialization and early days of commerce. You know, those Victorian uh, factories are gone. Um, and customers today are forcing us to change even further. And we as business leaders realize that times need to change and our businesses need to change. And we actually, that change means we need to support society. We're in a time where we think profit with purpose now, not profit alone. And those that do this are actually more successful for it. It's not taking profit away. They're actually becoming even more profitable. So what are the, those additional elements? There's all sorts of elements that get added in to support society and the communities where our businesses are. This, to me, brings it back to humanity and the human side of business and why our businesses exist. And businesses is becoming more human and kind. Now, don't get me wrong, profitability is a necessary byproduct of what we do, but it's not the reason for why we're doing it. There are, after all, some very dubious ways to just make profit, make an awful lot of it, but they're mostly illegal um, and not very ethical. So we're not gonna do that, that's not the point. The point is to do something useful for the rest of society. And yes, you do have to make sure it leaves something at the end because we need to feed ourselves. We do need to make some money. But when the driver becomes just profit, when people now are craving more than just commerce, nobody will care what you do. People care. And when people care, they engage. And when they engage, you capture their attention and you can sell successfully to them. So back to that definition. As a marketing professional, that's what I am, I think it's important we all think about the fundamental purpose of marketing as revolving around creating value for people. Yes, there's the ROI for the business, but it's creating value for people um, and for the customers we serve and all those different audience types of customer. So, yes, value for the business, customers, employees, business partners and others up and down the, the value chain. So as you shape your business going further into the 2020s, and during COVID, it gave us a chance to sort of think about our business, pivot, transform, reimagine. As you reimagine further your business, think carefully about your mission, vision, values, and add purpose to that. Why? Well, don't just take my word for it. There are thousands of statistics on the internet. And if you want some of them, I will send you some of them. But we're living in a world where Consumers seek brands with purpose and are more loyal to them. That's number one. Number two, purpose-driven businesses outperform the market. Who wouldn't want a bit of that? Three, people seek meaningful, engaging work that they can connect to purpose, even if it means sacrificing income. Now, not that we want to pay people less, but they will take a job that may be paying less because they feel it's connecting to purpose more for them. Four, purposeful work increases workforce productivity, well-being and loyalty. If we're happy in what we're doing, where we're working, what we're achieving, what we're contributing to, we're not going to feel so stressed out about it. We'll be happier. Our productivity will go up because we're happy doing what we're doing. And five, business leaders recognise the need for purpose. Big business is doing this, medium-sized business is doing this, and small business is doing this. So as business leaders, we need to let these five points sink in. 
and consider them in our business and in our marketing planning. So all of you that said you didn't do a marketing plan, apart from staying behind after class, um, do your business and your marketing planning. They're two things that sit together. Now, these five uh, facts, these five points urge me to, to get you to think and sit down and, and, and think about them carefully. And when you do that, go back to the seven P's and consider each of those seven P's in turn and how you need to shape them for you and your organization and your customers. And don't think of purpose as the eighth P. Think of it as the first P. And think about the five whys, the five whys of purpose. Again, you know, the loyalty, outperforming the market, meaningful work, increased productivity, and business leaders recognizing purpose. There's five whys. If you need a bit of a steer to helping you down this path, then tools such as the UN Sustainable Development Goals that we always talk about at um, ANFG can be used to help you add in a social purpose that's relevant to your business. This is all about being con a connected story and being relevant to you. So picking something that applies, that isn't a leap to a stretch too far for the imagination, because then it will also be far more authentic. It will really become um, naturally part of your, your thinking, your ethos and how you operate. And it will also help you kickstart finding other ways that you can support initiatives locally, uh, within your community or nationally or even globally. And that will add more value to your customers. And by doing that, your customers will feel that value and they will become more loyal to you, which means they're going to buy more from you, which means the bottom line is going to improve. So whether we're a solopreneur, a micro business, an SME or a corporate, we'll all be doing some marketing. Even if you said you're not doing any marketing planning, I guarantee you, you are doing some marketing. I often speak to business leaders who tell me, no, we don't do any marketing. We've got zero budget for marketing. We spend zero, zilch, nada on marketing. But when I ask them a few questions, suddenly they realise, actually, they're spending a fair bit of time on marketing because they're doing it themselves. Money, um, they may have developed a website and paid for that. Uh, and they may be spending quite a bit of effort on marketing at the end of the day. But without having strategized, don't be as scared of that word, without having planned, don't be afraid of that word, or monitoring what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing what you spend your time on, they're missing a trick. Instead, if they reimagined their business, they considered the eight Ps and the five Ys consciously, they set out a clear, simple business plan and then translate it to a bit of a marketing plan, they'll add considerable value to their bottom line through their customers and they'll also be supporting the planet.